Yo guys, Mike for Sim Racing 604, and this is my review of the Thrustmaster T128 wheel and pedal set. This is a wheel and pedal set designed not just to compete in the beginner and entry level market, it's designed to conquer it. Typically in the beginner wheel market, you have reputable name brands, you have good features, and you have good price, and you only get to pick two of those three but not so with the T128. This is designed to bring you all three. It has the Thrustmaster name behind it, whose T-Series wheels and pedals have become so popular in sim racing. It's also got good features such as a hybrid drive instead of just gears. It's got Hall effect sensors on the pedals. It's got magnetic shifters and all this for $200. So on paper, this seems like an absolute game changer and I can't wait to review it. Let's get into it. All right, guys. So as mentioned in the intro, this is going to be my review of the Thrustmaster T128. I'm actually very excited for this review. Thrustmaster reached out to me a few weeks ago and said they had this coming and I've been really looking forward to reviewing it ever since. As I say, on paper, this thing should conquer the beginner market and I'm super stoked about it. So uh, let's quickly, before we get driving, let's talk about what's included here. I mentioned in the intro that it uses a hybrid system, and that's exactly what's contained in here. Uh, it's the same system or, or same style of system they used for the T248 wheel, which is sort of the bigger brother of this. I like the T248. I gave it a good review back in the day, back when it first came out. But basically, uh, belts, pulleys, and gears to recreate those force feedback forces. Um, you might be used to the G920 or G29 wheels and uh, those use just gears. It's one of my few critiques of the Logitech uh, entry level wheels is that you get that grinding, that crunching sound uh, from those gears. But uh, the belts and pulleys in this system should smooth things out a lot. So uh, looking at the wheel here, it's, it's a smaller diameter. You can see it kind of compared to my hand. I believe this is, well actually I can measure, but I believe it's 25.5 centimeters. Just double check that outside diameter. Yeah, ish, 25.5, so 255 mil, which puts it certainly at the smaller end. Um, but at the $200 price point, you're not gonna get some 330 mil uh, beast that you would you know pull right out of a car. It's going to be a smaller wheel, typical of uh, sort of more gaming oriented wheels. And then on the front, there are a total of 13 buttons plus this D-pad here. Uh, they can see the Xbox button on the front. And I believe, according to the marketing uh, materials that I've seen, I believe there will be a PlayStation version of this as well. Um, it's just plastic. There's no leather. There's no um, Alcantara or anything like that. Just a plastic wheel. Very, very basic. Um, again, to keep that price point down. Um, behind the wheel here, we have these magnetic shifters quite loud I would say this was something people found with the t248 was that the shifters were quite loud um, and it looks like I, I'm gonna say these are quite a bit quieter but still on the louder end of the scale they are magnetic shifters and if you're not familiar with magnetic shifters um, they're generally preferred over um, non-magnetic style so uh, the return is a little bit faster and the shifts tend to be a little bit more crisp with that so uh, really cool that they packed this into a $200 wheel Looking at the rear of it, you can see there's nothing. You have to go underneath to see all your connections. So I'll try and get a zoomed in shot of this. Uh, but basically you have all your inputs and outputs here. Uh, USB-C is the connection. There's also an input um, for the uh, uh, power supply. And then you can connect your pedals here as well. Speaking of those pedals, as you can see, it's a two pedal set here, uh, quite small. <laughs> you can see it uh, kind of compared to my hand, uh, very, very small set of pedals. This is something you would typically see sat on a floor rather than in a full professional sim rig. Um, but I'm going to mount these on my sim rig and I'm not sure, I can't tell really, oh yeah. I think these holes here are for uh, putting a bolt through so I can put it on my sim rig, but I'll double check that. Uh, but the broader intent, there's rubber feet here, and most commonly you would see this on a floor. And the forces required to uh, use the accelerator and brake aren't going to be something that um, is uh, prohibited, or the, the forces required to accelerate and brake with these pedals uh, is something that would be compatible with on the floor use. It's not like you have to push the brake so hard that your brake's gonna go sliding across the floor or you're gonna go sliding backwards in your chair or anything like that. So um, yeah, accelerator, nice and smooth. As I mentioned before, it uses a Hall effect sensor. And what this is basically is it uses a magnet to more accurately read the uh, pedal travel. 
Typically, you'd see a potentiometer, but these Hall Effect sensors are known to be A, more reliable, and B, more accurate. So, um, yeah, pretty cool. Then this brake, you can see I can push it down with one finger, so not really that strong. You're not going to certainly get load cell levels of forces here, but hopefully there's enough resistance once I get this mounted. Oh, never mind. Here we go. I just noticed that there are pass-through holes here where I can put bolts to uh, get this on my rig. So uh, anyway, as I was saying about the brake, um, yeah, it doesn't require much force, but hopefully there's enough resistance there to make it feel somewhat like a brake and allow me to, you know, accurately uh, engage that brake and use the right amount of braking force. So broadly speaking, that is it. Everything is included in the box. You have your power supply, you have your USB cable. Um, there's also a desk clamp. Of course, most people will not be using this on a rig, as I mentioned before. So there's, there's a desk clamp as well, and that is going to go. There's a big threaded hole here that you can see, and that whole assembly uh, just tightens onto that and clamps down onto your desk. So um, yeah. Um, fundamentally this looks like a nice system um it's not going to be on the level of you know a, a higher even mid-range direct drive system this is strictly designed for the beginner and entry level market but again at the 200 dollars price point there isn't much competition and at least on paper the feature set here seems to blow everything else out the water or at least put it in a position of strong contention. So I hope it works well. I haven't actually tried this yet. Sometimes I get to try these things before I roll camera, uh, but this one I have not tried. So I'm very excited to uh, get this all mounted up and get driving. Um, yeah, I think I'll try it in a set of course and maybe do some rally driving after that and just give my general impressions of how the wheel and pedals feel. But uh, broadly speaking, I'm impressed so far with what I'm seeing here. Nothing that's really going to uh, again, uh, compete with sort of the bigger boys in the sim racing industry, but at the beginner and entry level price point, I'm very impressed with what I see so far. And there seems to be a lot of great features kind of nested into this system. So, uh, so far so good with the T128. And now, now let's uh, get it mounted on the rig and do some driving. All right, so once I plugged this into Windows, Windows recognized it right away and it installed it as the Thrustmaster Advanced Mode Racer. Um, so if I double click that, I get this screen and currently I've done some testing with it and I've set the rotational degrees to 540. You can either use this slider or you can just punch in the numbers here and get your preferred degrees of rotation, in this case 540. So you can see it has those hard stops. Then you return to zero. Again, use the slider, set it to the max rotational degrees, 900. That would be good for drifting or something like that. And then we can go to 270, very limited rotation, probably for formula racing. So yeah, you can either use that slider or just punch it in here. I'm gonna go back to my 540. Um, I'm in Windows, obviously. Um, I don't have the Xbox to test it, so not all of the buttons work. Uh, you guys can't see my feet right now, but when I press the pedals, it comes up. I do not have a clutch, but uh, gas and brakes seem to work just fine. POV hat does work. And then when I press the buttons, you can see that a corresponding number lights up. And then uh, there's a couple buttons that don't work on the Windows version, so those are uh, exclusive to PlayStation, presumably. And then we can click check for updates, and it's going to want my permission. I say yes, and then it says I already have the latest version. If not, you can just do a quick update there, which is really handy. Um, if I go to the Test Forces tab, I can uh, let the wheel do its own thing. It's going to sort of demonstrate the forces. Well, in this case, just an open C. Let's see. Bumpy road. There we go. So yeah, just showing off the force feedback effects. And then you can set the gain. I have it set to 100%, as you probably would guess. Uh, it's quite a weak wheel by comparison to a lot of the things I own. I own a lot of direct drive wheels and things. So um, having uh, a, a smaller motor like this, I've got it set to 100%. And I've done some testing. We'll get into this in a bit. But I didn't notice any clipping at 100%. So I might as well just keep it there at 100%. Um, and then you can... Uh, there is a boost. Interestingly, I haven't tested the boost yet uh, but there is a boost mode and then uh, you can set auto center if you want you can set that all the way up to 100 
do yourself a favor, don't set it to 100 because it's going to want to do this. As soon as I let go with my finger, it snaps back to center. Um, if you do want that, my suggestion would be to set it to something like 5%. That way it's a nice gentle return. Oh, it doesn't even go all the way. Interesting. But uh, yeah, anyway, I don't like to use return to center. So yeah, that's uh, basically how the wheel is set up in Windows. Very easy. I don't suspect it would be any more complex on your console either. Um, but now let's actually get into some game testing. Okay, guys. So first up, I set of course a competizione. And uh, I wanted to test with this sim because I feel it has some of the best force feedback in all of sim racing. You can really feel those curb details, you can feel what the car is doing underneath you. I wanted to see how that translate to, translates to this uh, T128. And uh, it's also the only sim I've tested so far where the, uh, the tachometer lights work. So they do come up green, yellow, red, blue. And then beyond that, once you hit the rev limiter or you're approaching the rev limiter, it starts to flash. And that's what's going to tell you to uh, to shift, that it's time to shift. So, uh, very cool. But again, ACC is the only sim I've found so far that actually supports that. Haven't tested Automobilista 2. Uh, but I'm sure all sims will support it eventually. But again, I'm testing this at a time where it hasn't been released to the public. So, um, I imagine full game support will be a little ways behind. So, how does the wheel perform in sim? Well, it's pretty incredible. It, it, it really is. And, uh, you know, I'm going to qualify all my statements in the coming 10 or 15 minutes as this is not going to replace your Simu Cube. This is not going to replace your high end direct drive or even high end belt drive wheel. This is a $200 wheel, and that comes with some compromises compared to, of course, the the, the bigger wheels, the high-end wheels in the market, and I think, you know, a, a level of common sense has to be applied to uh, the expectations of this T128. But broadly speak, actually, not even broadly speaking, but, you know, speaking to specifics, it performs really, really well. And the first thing I noticed, one thing I love, love, love about this wheel is the shifters. The shifters are so, so impressive. Packing um, magnetic shifters on a sub $200 wheel, or a $200 wheel in this case, is pretty much unheard of and very impressive and they're not they don't feel cheap they don't feel like they're gonna break they don't feel like the you know magnet is loose they're very crisp I never miss a shift and uh, it's just really really impressive and then the force feedback well I would say the force feedback is impressive for what it is it's not strong you don't go into this wheel if you choose to buy this wheel don't go in thinking that uh, you know it's gonna try and rip the wheel out of your hands or anything like that or if you're a force feedback purist and like to feel the smallest details of those curbs I haven't so far with this T128 on the default settings like if I do go over a curve like this sausage curb here I can definitely feel it and conversely uh, if I let's say overdrive the car and get to where it's a safe spot here and I lose traction there is definitely, yeah, there we go, under braking there when the front wheel's locked up. There is definitely a sense of uh, vibration through the wheel, and it's very impressive. And uh, going over a smooth curb like that, I didn't feel anything, but this rumble strip on the left side of the car there, that I could definitely feel, and it's a, an impressive amount of fidelity as well. So I think this wheel punches way, way above its weight in a lot of categories, and that force feedback is really impressive really impressive again I'm not claiming that it's strong I'm not claiming this is better than direct drive wheels on the market um, but at $200 it's very good it really is um, I think going with that hybrid drive system the same one that Thrustmaster puts into their T248 was a excellent call an excellent call I would take this force feedback over my G29 I think the world of the G29 it's such a reliable wheel used by so many people around the world and so few people have complaints that uh, I have no choice but to say nothing but nice things about the G G29 but um, force feedback for force feedback going head-to-head -head, um, I would take this T128 I honestly would there's a, a bit of a sacrifice in strength but in terms of the fidelity that I'm getting out of this wheel uh, for its force feedback quality out of the box haven't even started tuning um, really impressive, really impressive, 
and uh, we can talk a bit about smoothness. I want to talk more smoothness uh, in the next section of the video. Um, but uh, broadly speaking, in ACC, it's good. It's got a bit of crunch to it. It's not the best. Again, I, I'm kind of spoiled in that I typically run a direct drive wheel, which can be very, very smooth. This one definitely has a crunch to it. You can kind of feel the inner workings of the wheel, uh, but that's to be expected. But overall, I mean, to have what I have here, um, you know, in a wheel like this, to be able to feel these sausage curves and feel these rumble strips and, um, you know, the, the front tire slip at $200 is really amazing. And, um, yeah, just very, very impressive. And again, I go back to these shifters. I can't get over how good these shifters feel. Um, Thrustmaster has done a really, really nice job. All right, let's get into the next section of the video, and I'm going to talk about the smoothness. All right, so here we are in Dirt Rally 2.0, and I'm going to use this as sort of a test of the, the wheel, the, the turning abilities, how smooth is it, how fast can I go from one side to the other as I'm sort of sawing the wheel back and forth throughout this rally stage. Um, there's a bit of force feedback at play in Dirt Rally 2.0, not uh, to the same level of, uh, of fidelity that I find in ACC, so I won't talk much about that, but uh, just overall, how does the wheel perform in Dirt Rally 2.0? So, yeah, very light, very light, easy to turn, and yeah, the response is fantastic. The response is fantastic. It actually feels smoother here than it did in ACC, which is interesting. And I'm really able to sort of... Five left long. Get the uh, get the wheel to do what I need it to do here. Make sure, making sure I'm staying on the right line. Of course, oversteer is so much a part of Dirt Rally 2.0. And by the way, I'm a terrible rally driver, so I apologize if this is your first time seeing me rally drive. But um, yeah, so I'm able to get the wheel to do what I want for sure. Uh, very precise. There's mention in the uh, little prod, uh, product bulletin that I got with this wheel about what uh, what the wheel uses to uh, track your motion. And I, I believe it's some sort of optical system. I'll try and put a note on the screen here for what that is. But it uh, seems to work beautifully. Like in terms of precision, you're not giving anything up. It's, it's a bit crunchy, as I mentioned before, but honestly not too bad. Like I said, it feels better than it did, and it feels smoother than it did in ACC. I'm really able to do what I want here, so if you're into rally and looking for an entry-level wheel, I mean, this is it. This is phenomenal. Performing very, very well. Not much in the way of force feedback, as I mentioned before. Dirt Rally 2.0. I wouldn't really go to bat for the force feedback. Of all the things I would go to bat for, for uh, DR2, um, force feedback would not be one of them. So I'm not expecting much, and it's it's pretty light. Like, I mean, the motor in this is not terribly strong. And you sort of notice that. Like, there's, there's periods where it feels almost perfectly smooth, even though we're going over a bumpy road. That's partially down to the sim itself, and that's partially down to... Uh, the motor being sort of on the weaker end of the spectrum. But uh, it's overall a joy. Yeah, like, I keep having to tell myself, like, this thing is an entry-level wheel. <laughs> I mean, it, it feels um, not pro-grade, of course. It doesn't feel among the best wheels I've ever tried. Um, but you kind of lose yourself in the moment and have to remind yourself that, oh, yeah, I am, you know driving an entry-level wheel, something that uh, is going to be uh, available on the on the floor of Best Buy, priced at 200 bucks. Like, it's it's very, very impressive for what it is. I, I really love this wheel. I really do. I hope that that's coming through in the video. Um, as much as I talk about the shortcomings, I do really feel like overall this just massively, massively delivers um, as a wheel and wheelbase. In the next section, I'm going to talk about the pedals, which I think are kind of the weakest part of the T128 system. But the wheel and wheelbase, hugely overperforming for what I expect from something at this price point. Um, oh, I didn't talk about the size yet, as far as, you know, being only 255 mil. 
Um, it does feel small. It does kind of feel toyish. And the plastic, I mean, the plastic is, thankfully, the, the good part about plastic, of course, is that it's really easy on the hands. Um, so there's no wear here, no need for gloves. It's not going to give you blisters or anything like that. But yeah, the, the, the wheel being small, it does kind of feel a little bit toyish. But it is what it is. I think for the most common use case of this wheel, it more than delivers. Alright, let's talk about the pedals. Alright, so here we are in Assetto Corsa, and to test these pedals, I've pretty much set up a worst case nightmare scenario. This is the RSS 2013 V8 from RaceSim Studio. Yeah, it's super sensitive to throttle and brake inputs, so a uh, great way to test the pedals. Can I keep this thing under control while using the T128 pedals? Let's find out. So too much throttle on corner exit will absolutely light up those rear tires and send me into a spin. Too much braking will lock up the uh, front tires and you'll see a big puff of smoke. And of course I'll go careening through the apex and into the grass so really hoping for the best here seeing how much I can keep this in control with these pedals. And speaking of these pedals, what are my general impressions of them? Well. They're definitely the cheapest portion of this. I like overall. I love the T128, and I've been trying to express that to you guys. Um, but the pedals, they, they definitely feel cheap, and it's something I don't fully understand why manufacturers do this. It seems like uh, a common thing with entry level wheels is to. Um, sorry, can't uh, talk and drive at the same time. But a common thing for entry-level wheel manufacturers to do is put a really weak spring in the brake and I can't honestly figure out for the life of me why why that is why not put a heavier spring or at least pack a heavier spring that could be uh, swapped out because what I find is that it's so weak that it pretty much feels like the accelerator and it's harder to get that control now granted I think the most common use case is probably going to be in socks and again uh, on the floor so you don't want it too too hard but it just seems like they default to something too weak and I would like to see them go with something harder um, so that's my initial impressions I mean they're plasticky you definitely notice there's a step down in quality from uh, you know sort of the what what is now considered sort of the entry-level load cell market you have Moza in that market you have Fanatec in that market uh, yeah there, there's no doubt it's a, a big step down from that not only in terms of the uh, feel of the brake, but also the general construction. I mean, these feel plasticky. I'm not sure if it's coming through in the video or not, but uh, they're basically flexing right around the pedal uh, deck. I don't have a pedal deck on this uh, GT Elite. I have these arms that pedals go on, and that plastic base is basically wrapping around it with my heavy feet. So, I mean, as I say, it's uh, kind of a compromise in, uh, in build quality and, uh, you know, it's a heavily plasticky construction, but as you can see, like, I mean, I'm able to keep this RSS 2013 under control on the track and uh, find the limits of the braking and uh, yeah, get on the throttle safely, so they definitely do their job. I won't take that away from them, regardless about how I feel about the construction of them. In terms of the functionality and usability of them, it's actually very high, so... Uh, so yeah, very impressive on that front. But again, don't think you're stepping into this and uh, it's gonna go one-to-one -one with the CSL Elites or something like that. These pedals definitely um, feel cheaper. And of course, no third pedal. And that brake is definitely weaker. All right, I'm gonna go one more lap. I'm gonna finish this lap in the RSS 2013. And then we'll get into my final thoughts. But you can see I'm able to ease onto that throttle just at the right rate to not spin out. And then get it around these low speed corners in the infield section of the Nürburgring here safely. As a lot of you I'm sure know, even with very expensive pedals, that's not always an easy thing to do. So it's pretty impressive that uh, the T128s deliver. But yeah, definitely not my favorite set of pedals. Yeah, 
And the wheel, if you're wondering, how does it feel in a Seto Corsa as opposed to Competizione or um, or Dirt Rally 2.0? Well, it feels pretty good. It feels pretty good. Of course, there's so much in common uh, in terms of the code between ACC and AC as far as the feet, force feedback, so it's not surprising that it's uh, similar. And uh, again, the, the, the forces are weak, but uh, the fidelity of them, thanks to that hybrid system, is, uh, is pretty good. It's pretty good. All right, final corner here. And that'll conclude my time with the T128. And now let's talk about my final thoughts on the Thrustmaster T128. All right, so time for final thoughts on the Thrustmaster T128. And as usual, I'll go through the good, neutral, and bad things I like, things I'm okay with, and things I don't like. And in this particular case, there's more good than bad. And we'll start off with value. There is a huge amount of value here. And at the price point, it is with, you know, magnetic shifters and the hybrid drive system, the hull effect sensors on the pedals. I mean, there's just an incredible amount of value here. So if you're in this price range, if you're shopping in this price range, I mean, this is just really value packed and it's super impressive. It's a very impressive package. And the second thing then is price and the $200 price point is incredible for what you get here. If this was $250, I would definitely be saying, consider this at $200 to me, it's a no brainer. And if you look at something like the Logitech G923, which is, you know, more than twice this price, if I'm not mistaken, and um, a little bit stronger, and it has a, a few more features. But still, the value here at half the price is incredible. So that $200 price point, really, really impressive. And the third thing is the force feedback system. So inside this wheelbase is that hybrid drive system. So belts, gears, pulleys, uh, to translate those force feedback forces from your favorite sim to your wheel. And it works really well. Now notice I said force feed feedback system, not force feedback, because the force feedback is very light. The system works well. It does translate those forces of curbs and wheel slip and things like that very nicely to the wheel, but it's not strong. So I'll say the force feedback system, but the motor could definitely be stronger. I think at this price point, it's about what you'd expect, but don't go in thinking that you're getting something comparable to even a CSL DD or something like that. Know that it is light, but the system itself works well. And the fourth thing is the magnetic shifters. These are very, very impressive. It's probably my favorite feature of anything in this T128 system. Uh, they're just really great shifters. They're not too loud, but they they still retain that uh, precision you get with magnetic shifters. And to me, the fact that they included this at the two hundred dollar price point almost defies belief. It's really really impressive. I'm happy they did it, and uh, it translates well. It's a great feature. And then moving on now to the console compatibility, um, having the ability to use, in this case, this is uh, compatible with Xbox. I believe there will be a PlayStation version as well. I didn't get to test it because I don't own an Xbox, but the fact that it's not PC only will go a long way. So if you do decide, I mean, I think a lot of us start out on console. So if you buy this wheel to play on console, then eventually get into PC sim racing, you can take the wheel with you, which is great. And also the sound is another good Good feature. Um, even under heavy load, I had the force feedback or the gain rather set to 100% and going through a lot of force feedback effects and it stays quiet. I mean, I think the loudest part will be those shifters, but they're not overly loud and the motor itself stays quiet. There's not crunching like you get with the Logitech series. So I think that's going to really matter to a lot of people, um, you know, who live in a setting where you have to be quiet or, or rather game in a setting where you have to be quiet. So yeah, that's a, that's a great feature for sure. And then finally, the smoothness of the pedals. So even though I have my issues with the weight of the brake pedal, uh, these these pedals do stay nice and smooth and uh, it's easy. I, I hope you guys saw that in the Assetto Corsa video that I was able to get on throttle uh, nice and smooth and I was able to apply the brakes uh, rather smooth as well. So that smoothness and how that translates uh, to the wheel and then in turn to the game is very impressive. So moving on now to the neutral things I'm just kind of okay with. And the first one is the size of the wheel, 255 millimeters, not a big wheel. It's not going to feel realistic. It's not going to feel like the car you drive every day, uh, nor is it the size of, you know, a lot of the Momo wheels or, or even sim racing wheels that we see at 270, 300, 330 mil. It is smaller. Now, 
again, this is going to skew strongly toward the gaming end of the spectrum as opposed to the simulation end of the spectrum. So I don't know that anyone's really going to care too much or many people are going to care too much about the size of the wheel, but it is definitely on the uh, smaller end of the scale. So just something to be aware of. And also in the neutral category, the limited hard mounting option, something I didn't tell you guys in the video, but that was using the clamp there. I couldn't find the hard mounting options for this wheel um, to get uh, hard mounted onto my rig. So I just used that clamp. So I sort of um, inadvertently did a test of the clamp and you guys probably didn't notice it because it, it holds very, very firmly. So that's cool. But at the same time, better hard mounting options would be appreciated. So we've got these two holes on the pedal, but it kind of sits in the middle. So you guys saw, or you might've seen it kind of rocking over my uh, pedal deck or pedal arms. Um, so it's unfortunate. Uh, it would be pretty easy, I would think, to put in threaded holes um, into the wheelbase uh, to, to uh, get rid of that. But unfortunately, that wasn't the case. So uh, I just had to use the clamp. And again, these two bolts in the middle, which kind of led to a rocky effect. So better hardware um, or better hard mounting options would be appreciated. But I also know that the majority of users will probably place these on the floor underneath their work desk and just clamp this onto their work desk. And um, yeah, so I, I, I don't fault them too much for not having hard mounting options or really strong reinforced hard mounting options, but uh, something would have been appreciated, something a little bit more than what we have. And lastly, the brake resistance. So, um, yeah, it's not strong. I can move it with one finger, and uh, obviously I would like to have it stronger. I mentioned it would be great to have a spring, a stronger spring put in here, but I also know that that's going to lead to the pedal sliding across the floor, which again, if you go back to that use case of people using this just on the floor, if you push too hard on this, it, if you had to push too hard on this, it would just slide like this across your floor and uh, people would not want that. So I kind of understand. It'd be nice if they somehow engineered something where you could switch out the spring, but Overall, it's just kind of something you should be aware of. And finally, the bad the things I don't like. And the first one is the pedal construction. Now, I'm not expecting an all metal Husingfeldt style design or anything like that, but this just feels and looks very cheap. It's it's 100% plastic except for the sort of inner workings underneath the pedals. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very plasticky, very light, and uh, not something I'm a huge fan of. Again, taking into account the price point, I get why they did it. It just kind of feels cheap and is a letdown next to uh, the sort of uh, really impressive wheel and wheelbase here. And lastly, in the bad category, there's no connections at the rear of the wheelbase for your power supply, for your USB cable, or for your pedals. And I think you can connect a shifter here as well. Um, they're underneath, so you have to run the cables out the back. But if it's coming out the back anyway why not put the connections at the back so it's accessible it's it's just extra complicated unnecessarily complicated i don't know why you could argue it's cleaner but again those cables still come out the back so if it's coming out the back why not have the connections at the back i just don't really get it so that's it but overall guys I think this is incredible. I think this is more than just a contender at that beginner and entry level sim racing market. I think this is the new standard for what a $200 wheel is going to look like. I mentioned off the top that typically you only get two of three in terms of a name brand, a good set of features and price. This seems to do it all. So uh, 200 bucks is really impressive. I think that's going to appeal to a lot of people. It's for somebody perhaps who is, you know, on a tight budget, somebody who is just looking to dip their toes into sim racing and don't want to overcommit. And, you know, having that Thrustmaster name behind it, who again, have made a reputation for themselves with the T-Series wheels, you see them everywhere. And then the features, I hate to keep harping on it, but that hybrid drive system, the Hall Effect sensors, the um, magnetic shifters, the console compatibility, and PC, there's a lot here. And it's a very, very impressive package. To me, this is the new standard. To me, this is the beginner and entry level wheel to get and just very impressive. So um, thank you to Thrustmaster for sending me this wheel for review. And thank you guys for watching. And we'll see you next time.